Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be about Dennis Andrew Nilsson, who was a murderer. Okay, we're getting back into these types of videos. I'm only taking two, three classes this semester because those are the only classes that I need to graduate. So all of my free time will be for YouTube videos and I'm going to get as many out as possible, but also I wanna make sure that the quality is good. So let's hope that works out. If you are new and these are the types of videos that you like, please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell because I'm gonna be posting more of these videos. So Dennis Andrew Nilsson was born on November 23rd, 1945 in Fraserburgh, Scotland. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> and in the Netflix documentary, it's called Memories of a Murder, the Nilsson Tapes. I recommend watching it. I finished it, I wanna say like three or four days ago. And it's only like an hour long, so it's re relatively short to other documentaries about murderers. Anyways, in this documentary, he mentions that he was sexually abused by his grandfather, which is disgusting, up until his grandfather died when he was around four years old. And before we get into the case, something that's interesting to note is that a couple of years before he started murdering people, like went on this murdering spree, a teenage boy actually jumped from his window, which was on the third floor, first of all, which is like, you have to be in a really scary situation to jump from a three-story window. Like, are you kidding me? That literally sounds like a nightmare. And what's even crazier is that the boy actually survived, but he needed a hundred stitches. So when the boy was questioned, he mentioned that he had woken up and Dennis was stripping him naked and was attacking him. And so he jumped from the three story building. Unfortunately though, it was mentioned in the documentary that Dennis was never charged with anything because he didn't feel comfortable testifying, which is such an unfortunate situation because I know why victims don't come forward or don't feel comfortable coming forward. But at the same time, like he could have been charged with that. So that sucks. Anyways, let's get into his murdering spree. So Dennis started murdering people in 1978. And sadly, he targeted gay men, homeless men, drug addicts, sex workers. And it kind of reminds me of John Wayne Gacy because that's also what he did. He would target people that didn't have the homes and needed a place to stay or needed food and took advantage of that. So in December of 1978, Dennis offered Stephen Holmes alcohol because the bar had denied him alcohol because he was underage and he basically said i'll give you alcohol if you come to my place and so he was like okay unfortunately his way of killing was strangling people he would like let them fall asleep and then strangle them and do things with them so in this case he strangled stefan with a tie until he was unconscious and then drowned him in a bucket of water it's so gross to me because you'll find out later on in this case that he does this very often. He would wash their bodies and then keep them on his bed so that he could sexually please himself. And he would usually keep their bodies in the floorboards or a cupboard that he had. So his next victim would be in October of 1979. And this victim was a student from Hong Kong that accused him of strangling him during a bondage play session. So it was stated that the student decided to not press charges um, as we've seen from the other victim, a lot of people were scared to come forward because of the homophobia. And so nothing happened after that. That was the end of that one. And only a couple months later in December of 1979, Dennis offered a sightseeing tour of the capital to Kenneth Ockenden. And I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. And after this tour, he invited him over to have dinner with him. So when they arrived at Dennis's house, he offered to show him his record collection. So that's what they went off to do. He was showing him his record collection. And then he strangled him with his headphone wire. And what's even crazier to me is that after he killed him, he continued to listen to music with the same headphones that he had used to kill him, which is literally psychotic. Like, are you, I mean, obviously he's psychotic, but that's like even more psychotic, like on a different level. After he listened to music, he was watching TV with his body, which literally like gives me the creepiest vibes. Like imagine a dead body next to you, near you. Like just, it drives me crazy. I want to be a forensic scientist, but just thinking of seeing a dead body is crazy to me. And when he decided that he was done with his body, he put his body in the floorboard of his home. Every now and then he would bring the body back up to sit in his little armchair next to him to watch TV and just do weird things with, which is ugh, so gross. And another thing he would do was photograph the body in different positions that were appealing to him. And after doing all of that, he would place it in his bed to sleep with it. A corpse, a actual corpse would sleep next to him in his bed and he got pleasure out of that. 
So fast forwarding to May of 1980, there was a 16 year old boy named Martin Duffy asleep at a bus station and he was lured to Dennis's home because he had offered him a meal and a place to sleep for the night, which is automatically a red flag. No one, I mean, I like to believe that people have good intentions, but nine times out of 10, people aren't just gonna be like, oh, let me just go pick up some random person and let them sleep at my house. One, because you don't know what that person is capable of, and two, because you have to feel that you're strong enough to control that situation. And this grown ass man against a 16 year old boy, like, come on. So Dennis ended up strangling Martin and drowning him in the sink. And then after that, he bathed with his body and pleased himself with the body, which is so gross. Like I said, he does the same things over and over again with different victims. And when he was deciding where to put the body, he ended up putting it in the little cupboard, but because the body started bloating, he decided to put it in the floorboards instead. So you may be asking yourself, why was the body bloating? And in case you aren't familiar with what happens to our bodies after we die, allow me to explain. So the gas in our body causes our corpse to expand, which is disgusting. And after that process, our eyes are pushed out of their sockets and our tongues are forced out of our mouths. And a lot of people, um, if you watch Forensic Files, murder case shows anything that has to do with death you would know about that um, because it is mentioned a lot that when we die our eyes pop out of our head and things like that super gross don't want to get too into it but it's also a very interesting process so we are now at the end of the year 1980 in this case and dennis would continue to bring the corpses up to please himself with them over and over again and then put them back in places that he needed to to keep them stored properly so he went on to kill five more men but only one of those men were identified and the man that was identified was 26 year old william sutherland i could be saying that wrong i apologize if i am and this one is very sad because william was actually a father to a three-year-old boy and this one i believe is actually in the documentary if i can remember that correctly so dennis actually met william at the job center that he worked at Another weird fact was that Dennis actually interviewed people for this place that he was working at. I want to say it was like some store, like a grocery store type thing, pharmacy slash grocery store type thing. I'm not sure. And a lot of people were uncomfortable with this when they found out what he was capable of because he acted super normal, as most psychopaths do. But just imagine like you're watching TV and then you see this murderer that interviewed you and how he lured people to his home and you're just like, wow, that could have been me. And currently it is still not known how he was murdered because Dennis claimed to be too drunk to remember, which I feel like is bullshit because Dennis often referred to himself as the murderer of the century. And we can see that a lot of murderers in the past have referred to themselves as a greater human being, as like a higher power because of the way that they feel after they kill someone and because they want respect and I honestly don't believe that he was too drunk to remember. I think he just doesn't want to spill everything. So I'd like to point out that Dennis was renting an apartment, also known as a flat, and the bodies began to smell extremely bad. I have never smelled a dead body personally, but because I watch a bunch of murder shows, I can only imagine based off of people's stories. And I've also seen lots of videos of victims' families saying that they have smelled the dead body walking into a murder scene and that it is a smell that you can never forget. It is worse than a dead animal and any other smell that you can think of. So what Dennis decided to do was cut up the bodies using his butchering skills that he learned in the army. Yes, he was in the army. I don't understand. This whole case is just very random. But he went on and hacked the bodies on his kitchen floor. Kitchen floor with a knife, a huge knife. I would assume it would be a butcher knife because a regular knife isn't going to cut through human flesh or bones. And he has even admitted to boiling the skulls of his victims, which is crazy. Like imagine, that's literally like some witchcraft, like devil, satanic shit. A human skull boiling. And he probably used the same pots and pans to make food, which is, horrifying and now that i'm thinking about it i'm not sure if the people that he invited over actually had meals with him but if they did like i would assume he would want to fuck with them and cook their food with the same pots that he boiled people in does that make sense he was questioned as to if he practiced cannibalism at all and he said that he did not 
but he did refer to his bodies as quote beef rump steaks which is absolutely disgusting i'm a vegan so steak in general just sounds disgusting but a human body like i literally want to throw up so after this chopping and boiling process dennis had to get rid of their limbs so he so he buried them in his garden and then he would stuff the torsos the torsos and suitcases until he could burn them whole ass torsos and suitcases that literally is gonna give me a nightmare. I was researching this case for a couple of days and I would literally just think about the fact that he had torsos of different humans. Torso, like whole torsos, that's just crazy to me. So in September of 1981, he murdered yet another young man and this victim was 23 year old Malcolm Barrow and this victim was 23 year old Malcolm Barlow. So he was actually unconscious laying outside of the building that Dennis lived in and he suffered from epilepsy, which hits me deep in my heart because my older brother has epilepsy and just thinking of the fact that someone would take advantage of that makes me want to cry. <laughs> So when Malcolm went to Dennis's home to thank him for calling the ambulance like any normal good human would, he had a seizure. And once again, this hurts my heart deeply because I can only think of my older brother in this case. So when this happened, Dennis strangled him and then kept his body underneath his sink, which is like, I'm going to post some photos. I, I'm posting them throughout this whole video, but his kitchen was relatively small especially for bodies i mean i think anyone's kitchen is relatively small to fit a whole human body there multiple bodies of that so at this point dennis was forced to leave by his landlord i am not sure why but i can only assume because he's fucking weird and so he decided that he needed to burn the remains of the victim so that's exactly what he did he started a bonfire in his garden and burned all of their mane. Literally, the smell of that, like even just bones, that's so fucking gross. So then he relocated to a new place and this was in North London. I don't know how to pronounce the place, so I'm not going to try because I will absolutely butcher that name. I shouldn't be using the word butcher in this video, but moving on. So we are now in March of 1982 of this case and this is when Dennis strangled 23-year-old John Howlett. Once again, I am deeply sorry if I said that wrong. And then drowned him after unsuccessfully killing him three times. Reading things like that always scares me so much because, of course, someone's going to fight for their life. But doing it three times, thinking of the fact that someone knows they're going to die, ugh, it gives me like full-on chills just thinking about that. And the process was the same. He likely hit him under his floorboard or in a different cupboard that he had. His next victim was 27-year-old Graham Allen, and he was murdered a couple months later in September of 1982. This one was a little different from his previous victims because he was actually left in the bathtub for three days and then dissected. And then he was dissected on the kitchen floor. Dennis's final victim was 20-year-old Stephen Sinclair. And on January 26, 1983, he was strangled to death while he was sleeping and then Dennis bathed him and laid him on his bed to lay next to him once again. So as you can imagine, these bodies were literally just piling up because he had so many of them and so he was trying to find a quick way to dispose of them and came up with the conclusion that flushing them down the toilet was the best option. What a fucking idiot. Just an idiot in general. So he began flushing their internal organs, flesh, and bones down the toilet. And the craziest thing is the only reason that he was ever caught was because the drains in his apartment complex were clogged by these body parts. The only reason he was caught is because the drains in his apartment complex were clogged by body parts. Not the smell, but it wasn't until the drain cleaning company actually went out to check what the fuck was going on. So Dennis was finally arrested and was convicted of six counts of murder and two attempted murders on November 4th of 1983. I just think the craziest, oh, you like my merch. I just think the craziest part of it all is that he was not gonna get caught if he had not flushed the body parts down the toilet. And it just makes you think like how many other people have not been caught because of that reason or because they're sneaky, you know what I mean? So my camera died before I could film an outro. So I just wanted to say, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Like I said, I will be posting more videos like this. And thank you so much for watching.